uh, Jane, True Legal Media is an online publication whose goal is to motivate and inspire women and youth through interviewing successful individuals in society like you. Can you introduce, introduce yourself to our readers? I'd love to, thank you. I'm a brand specialist and I have a performance management business. Most of my work is facilitating brand performance and leadership development in companies. I also work with individuals, helping them put a success plan in place. Thank you. Author of three books, what inspires you into writing? I always think of it more as sharing than writing and I feel I've had an amazing journey of experiences in my work life and to be able to share them with other people so that they enjoy the learning too is what inspires me to write. Thank you. What did you study at the Institute of Higher Learning? I started studying a long time ago and the first, my first um, career move, in fact, was in food. So I qualified in food and nutrition, and my first job was in a company where they had a very active marketing department. And I then ended up going to the marketing department and fell in love with marketing and brand. And the next qualification that I got was a, a, an international qualification in business management. And then thereafter, I think it, it took a life of its own. And my career has been more about opportunity than formal qualification. And I've learned a lot from a lot of incredible people along the way. Thank you so much. Before you engaged in writing books, what were you doing? I had a PR company for 15 years. Um, and I had very varied clients in that time. And I loved it. And when I wrote the first book, clients started asking for workshops. So I, for a while, for a couple of years, ended up running the PR business and the performance management business at the same time. But I realized that my passion and my purpose was actually in helping people develop themselves, to see their potential, and to help them be guided. And, and that's why I ended up deciding to specialize in the performance side of things and leave the PR behind. Okay. What inspired you into writing and who inspired you? I had an interesting start into my writing career. Um, it was never planned. It was what I call a very happy accident. But at the time when I had the PR company, I had a client who wanted us every year to put together a week of events to celebrate National Women's Day. And I decided to have an event around rugby where we could teach women all about the game. So I phoned a gentleman who at the time was the marketing director of Adidas, Gavin Cowley. He's also a sports commentator, and in his day he was a well-known sports person. And I phoned and I asked him if he would come along and teach the 200 women about the game of rugby. And he did. In fact, it was quite fun, because I said to him, I want you to bring two gorgeous-looking rugby players with you on the night. You can actually show us how to tackle them, how to form a scrum. And he did, and he brought with him a gentleman called Tox van der Linde. And the three of us ended up doing this, this rugby learning show many times as a fundraiser for schools and for corks as a team builder. So along the way, Gavin and I had many chats about sponsored athletes. Because he was working in a marketing department, and I was often using sponsored people, sponsored rugby people, cricket, all sorts of sports, for clients for promotion. And we just, you know, we both felt the same way that because, let's say, a rugby player is really good at their sport, they're not always good at managing the public, managing their sponsors, or managing the media. But nobody takes them off the field to learn what they need to know for this job. So we, in fact, wrote then a life skills program for one of the rugby unions. And at the last minute, the course was cancelled because their rugby was so bad that season. And the management said, we can't take these guys off the field to learn what they call soft skills. We actually think of them as necessary skills. And we looked at all this information and said, let's put it into a book. 
So I wrote the book and with Gavin and he put the sporting anecdotes into the book to bring it to life so that there were real life examples in the book. And it took us by surprise because we thought we were just going to write this book and it would be relevant for anybody in the workplace. Because often you go in and you've got a degree, but nobody's taught you how to chair a meeting or how to manage conflict or how to manage yourself. So in fact we wrote this book and it was spotted by the Department of Education and they then made it a life orientation textbook for learners because they, they said to us, teachers are expected to prepare learners for the business world but they've never been in the business world themselves. So it was a very practical book and it was very popular and it was a bestseller. And chapter one was about personal brand and in those days seven, eight years ago, people didn't really know what personal brand was. So most of the requests for talks and courses and workshops were around personal brand. And Gavin at the time took, um, took on a project for World Cup Soccer 2010 and he wasn't available to do this. So I then ended up doing all the talks and the courses. And I absolutely loved it. And then what I did is I took the first chapter and I expanded it into my second book, which I wrote on my own called Raise Your Profile. And that's partnered um, by SAB because they wanted that material for their entrepreneurs that they support in their Kickstart program. Because often entrepreneurs don't know how to market themselves or how to market their business using themselves. Mm. And that's how the second book came. And then along the way I did a lot of work with, with leaders, with executives who were saying, you know, we, we need to plan how to grow other leaders in our organization, how to identify them, how to capacitate them, so that one day when we're not here, the next tier of leaders is available to run the company. And that's when I wrote the leadership program called Raise Your Leaders, which is my third book. And I just believe we live in a country that is rich in opportunity, and we need to be producing leaders of a high caliber who can make a difference. Mm. Thank you. What were your dreams at childhood? Hmm. When I was little, I wanted to be a librarian. I just thought I loved books, I loved reading, and I always thought the dream job would be to be surrounded by books all day, and just thinking that you know that's what I'd be doing, reading. And then when I was a little bit older, my passion is also I love food and I love travel. And that's why I decided to study food first before I got into business. Okay. What is your feeling towards women representation at workplaces in South Africa? You know, I'm seeing more and more in the workshops that I do in corpus. I work with male and female teams. And they are dynamic, incredible women, but they're not at the top of the organization. And I think society has limited them. And they are no longer limited, but they sometimes limit themselves. They don't have self-belief and confidence in many cases to get them to the top. So yes, I know there are many circumstantial factors like women you know, are often the primary caregivers in the home and because of that they don't have the same career opportunities. But I think women are so capable and so dynamic and if they have the right support system, they can manage to raise families and have incredible careers. And I, th I do think that the opportunities are there and it's getting better and better, but I, do, I also think that it's inexcusable that, that approximately 3% of CEO positions in this country are held by women. In your opinion, how should the government empower women? I think there's so much that they can do and I always think they need to lead by example. They need to be more women in power. They need to look at providing practical support. Women entrepreneurs, make it easier for them. There are a lot of, there's a lot of red tape in having a small business and I think they could look at the bureaucracy and they could try and make it easier. How do you help individuals or companies build their brand? You are talking of building brands. How do you help these people? You know, I have the same policy, whether it's an individual or a company. 
you look at what makes the person or the company distinctive, special, unique. What is their competitive edge? And once they know what that is, and they believe in themselves or the product, it's then putting the right brand plan in place so that you can achieve what you set out to achieve. So you can realize your dreams as an individual. It's not about attracting work, it's about attracting the right work that you are suited to and that you will love. Because when you put people into slots where they're really good at things, that's when they grow and that's when they flourish. So it's about putting a plan in place that is leveraging the strength of the individual or leveraging the uniqueness of a product or a service in the company. Okay. What is your advice to the youth, especially girls who are at crossroads regarding the choice of a career path? I think they've got to get to know themselves. They've got to find out what they're really passionate about. And that sometimes doesn't happen in your youth. Sometimes it only happens a little bit later. But to identify what they want to achieve, to try and have a long-term goal in place, nothing wrong with dreaming. And knowing that there might be many details on your career path. I always say the word career as a noun means your working life. The word career as a verb means that you're going to go off course. So like I started in food and then went into business and marketing and brand, that's okay because the lessons that I learned initially have actually never gone to waste because you're learning about yourself and you're learning all sorts of skills, all skills. I think to start off if you're not sure how to go, you are at a crossroads, try different things and to have realistic expectations. Go and do an internship, go and do a job shadow. Go and understand what a career involves. Understand what an industry is all about. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What is perfect success? And uh, have you achieved success? I always ask in my courses, I say to my delegates, how do you define success? And it's a personal thing. Everybody sees success differently. Some people may see it as you know, a big fancy car and a corner office and a title. For me personally, success is about balance. About being able to balance work and play, family and career, and also most importantly being able to balance business and benevolence. I've been involved in an NGO for 19 years and I think it's made me a well-rounded person. And when I can see that I'm involved in something so worthwhile, and I know that it's making a difference. I don't feel that my business is purely commercial. Also, the work that I'm doing now in performance is about helping people get better. What they do with that, it may be purely commercial, but I always like to hope that they've got to know themselves better in the process and that they will end up doing something for other people too. Okay. What is most important to your to to you, mission, core value, or profit? I'm not financially driven, naturally. I've, I've never loved the numbers side of the business, but I love doing good work, and I do believe that you need to be rewarded adequately. And I think if you give something away for free, sometimes if it's a product or service, people don't always value it. So for me, the fulfilment of my business. It's about the purpose. It's about helping people see their potential and developing it. That to me, it's the mission. Okay. What do you do during your leisure time? I love doing many things. I love cooking and entertaining. I love traveling. I like walking. I love the outdoors. I like playing golf. I love reading. But mostly, given a choice, I would want to spend my time with my family. Okay. Are you married? How do you balance work and the other family activities? I'm married and have been for a long time. And my husband and I got married when we were very young. He's incredibly supportive, as are our two sons. And I think, going back to your question about women in the workplace, I think that every woman can raise men 
to respect other women. And my boys and my husband have always respected the work that I've done. They've always admired it and they've always supported it. And they've known that at times it's been a little bit busy, but I involve them in it. So if I'm about to write a book, I sit down and say, guys, the next six months is going to be a little bit hectic. Is it okay with you? What's happening in your six months? So it's always there's been a lot of family support and a lot of family involvement in the work that I do. Thank you so much. Uh, this is the end of our interview. It went so quickly, and I was having so much fun talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Like an hour,